Okay, so we appear to be up and running. Um, I'm going to have to change the volume of the sim because this is the Twin Otter, the noisiest plane in the known universe. Um, so we'll see. We'll just get that there and just go and make sure that I can monitor the stream. Okay. So if you were watching yesterday, this is a continuation of the same flight, except we have changed aircraft. So if we go and have a look at a little nav map. Yesterday we took off from Punta Reisa on Sicily and we flew around Sicily and we went past Mount Etna and then flew up the coast of Italy from Reggio Calabria up to Tamra then right the way we followed the the beach around to Taranto and then we landed at Bari just as the sun was setting yesterday and we were flying the Kodiak we've switched to the Twin Otter today we're going to hopefully today fly over to Naples then over to Pescara and then finally to Rome so we'll see how we get on so we're going to be flying through the hills along the way and just basically you know exploring so I am live on the West Europe server so if you happen to be around uh, you can join in and we'll see how we go okay so first things first let's go and make sure we've got some fuel in this aircraft so go and fill it up to oh, we're over maximums look we've got lots of people in it apparently according to this but it doesn't render them which is slightly odd uh, so we're going to get rid of the people <laughs> and give ourselves 75% fuel and so because we're going for an explore and let's get inside the aircraft and see how we go so we have to remember how to get inside the aircraft first there we go so we're cold and dark in the Kodiak. We need to first of all go into Flight Simulator and choose the correct control configuration for not the Kodiak, the, the Twin Otter. We have to choose the correct control configuration for the Twin Otter. I've got various different throttle settings. So I will need to change that. So we had it configured for the CRJ. There's the Kodiak. There's the A320. There's the Savage Cub, the C172, the King Air. Grand Caravan and the Twin Otter finally so we apply those control settings and we resume so first things first we can move the fuel condition lever forwards we can move the propeller condition and we can test that the controls will move it through its full range and they do and then we pull it back to about 75-80% which is fine I'm just going to check the control throws of the throttles. So they're looking good. And we can use reverse as well. That's looking good. Okay, so we're pretty much ready to go with getting the aircraft going. So we removed the lock on the controls. We go up above. We turn on the battery. We go and turn on the boost pumps for the fuel and they come on you can hear them whoops and we go and turn on the generators and then we start the right engine and let's go and check the volume levels because that's incredibly loud And then we come back to the middle and we move the left starter. Let's just go and check that engine is up to speed and running. And yes, you can see it's running. And the left engine is now running. Excellent. So we're pretty good, good to go. Okay. Off we go to 
explore Italy a little further. So release the parking brake and I'm going to engage reverse to push us away from the ground crews. This is not to be advised with a twin otter by the way, I'm just doing it to avoid the dozy ground crews in Flight Simulator. So we're slowly reversing away from them. And we'll start turning away from them so we don't chop them to pieces. Let's have a look outside the aircraft. So, before we go anywhere today, let's go and see which way the wind is going. So we've got a five knot crosswind of the runway at uh, Bari. So if we go and taxi down the towards the entry point F, or even D, we can take off very quickly in the Twin Otter. So it's not a concern at all. They've got a death wish, haven't they? They're walking towards the propellers. So we need to turn right out of here, or left and circle round, and then follow the taxiway, which is fine. We'll just spin round. Let's at least do this a little bit properly, shall we, and follow the taxi lines. So out to the taxiway for the runways. A little bit fast there. Go back inside the aeroplane, it's a bit quieter. Let's go and check those sound levels while we're at it. Oops. So, yeah, that's looking fine. There we go, that's better. So I can see what I'm doing and and check the sound levels. I'm just mindful that the um, the Twin Otter is a very noisy aircraft, so we don't want it to be overpowering on the speakers. Okay, so we're just gently taxiing out. We're going to go for the next taxiway onto the runway, and then we'll get on our way. So we are going to circle Bury Airport before we take off. And then we will head off. Our first heading of the day is going to be 259 degrees over to, straight across the country, towards Naples. Obviously when we get to Naples we're going to go have a look at Mount Vesuvius, because why not? And this is where it pays to have paid attention before we run across the grass. <laughs> the perils of aircraft that don't continue doing what you told them to do. Okay. Obviously we're not using air traffic control, we're just going for a fun flight in Flight Simulator. I 
Okay. We're going for 10 degrees flaps, full throttle. And we're up. It really is so easy to fly this thing. It takes off like it's on an elevator. So you can see that crosswind is just pushing us right. Bari to our left. And we're going to pull the throttles back to about 80%. Before we go to the outside view, I am going to turn the aircraft down further because it's going to be noisy. Let's go double check that. Okay, so you can see Bari Airport behind us and there's the town, so we'll go and circle over the town and have a look at it before we get off on our way. There's quite a big settlement behind us as well. Let's go have a look at that on the map. So, okay, so this is Paraisi. Paraisi, sorry. So Bari is the major part behind us, so we'll, we'll loop around and go and look at the harbour at Bari. So we're coming up to 140 knots. the throttle as we descend. So this is Bari. I think we spoke during the podcast yesterday. Oh, there's a football ground down here. We spoke yesterday about uh, Nicholas of Bari, who we now know as Saint Nicholas, who was born, or at the early part of his career was spent here, and then he went to Demra in southern Turkey, or what is now known as southern Turkey. Um, used to be part of Greece, I'm I guess. So there's a couple of boats in. The photogrammetry always makes things look quite muddy, doesn't it? That one's covered in trees. <laughs> Church is modelled very well here by the photogrammetry. Very cool. Terrain. Terrain. It's a shame when you get repeating textures showing up on the sea. Sometimes it disguises them very well, but sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, we're having tiles show up as well, which isn't great. Okay, so let's get the engines up to speed. I have got the ship's add-on running, so you can see out, if we look out to sea, you're going to see saving ships now and again, or um, cargo ships. There was one there a moment ago. I'm sure I saw a ship. Anyway, saw so it catching the light. So we are going to head off. Italy. 
So we're looking for 260 degrees or thereabouts. So we can watch the compass down here. And there's a binnacle compass here as well. So that's 250 degrees. We're just going through, just coming up for 260. And we'll level the aircraft out. Okay, just going to make sure the volumes are looking good. Yeah, that's looking fine. So we're going to move the heading bug on the autopilot round to 260 degrees. So we'll hold it down until it comes all the way around. See the plane's starting to tip to one side already while we were doing this. So we'll just straighten that back up on the so we're just aligning these markers to get the plane straight on the level. And we look for 260 degrees on the heading bug and we go for heading mode on the autopilot. We can go engage it and go for altitude hold mode as well while we're at it. So that we are flying at 3,500 feet. Going for heading mode. So heading mode's on, altitude mode's on and and we're good to go. And now we can enjoy our flight across Italy in the Twin Otter. So we're just passing the industrial area to the southwest of Bari and Modugno is the... that's probably not how you pronounce it. I've probably just murdered the pronunciation of it. So there you go. Go and have a look out. So we have a see if we can scoot around the aircraft and see what we can see out of the back. Oh, unfortunately we can't see easily out of the windows. We've probably got a better view out of the passenger windows, to be honest. So there's the airfield we took off from a few minutes ago at Bari. And we're out on our way now. Across, across the Italian mainland. If I go and scoot the camera up into the, the nose of the aircraft, we can see the scenery coming. So this town we're just about to pass over. If we can have a look. Bitonto. I wonder who decided that the circular road system was a good idea. can't quite see it in the trees but from overhead it looks quite amazing okay so we've got you can see here we've got a 13 knot wind that is slowly pushing us away from that track of 259 degrees so we'll steer into it slightly so if we go and look at the compass We'll turn a few degrees into that track. We'll hopefully arrest us being pushed along the way. I wonder if there are any major towns anybody would like to visit along this line. I mean, once we get nearer the hills it'll become a bit more interesting. Got quite a long leg though, 100 miles basically, until we get to, towards Vesuvius. So it's going to be about, what speed are we doing? 140 knots. So about three, half an hour, three quarters of an hour until we get there. So we'll just go and get inside the aircraft so it's not too noisy. We'll go and put our nose out over the front of the aircraft and we'll pull up the flight map. I guess we could go and program our route couldn't we into the GPS and then we can see where we're going. So flight plan. Focus. The aircraft, the airfield we just left was LIBD. So we roll the inner knob to get an L. I B D 
So this would just give us a, an alignment point of, you know, a line leaving here for, for our um, reference on the map. Let me go for the next entry on our flight plan. The next one will be L-I-R-N. So L I R and then N. Enter. The one after that will be L I B P. So L I B P Enter and then our final whoops oh, I shouldn't have done that. Can I just press flight plan to get back out of here? There we go. Put the focus back in there next field, LIBP, next one we want Campiono, El Lira which is Rome which will be our end point today L I, whoops I Lira there we go, enter. We want the airport up there. So there we go. And we remove the focus and we press the flight plan button to make the display go away. And then we've now got the line on the map. So if we wanted to now, we could use nav mode. So we could switch to nav. If we do that, we'll see what happens. At the moment, heading mode is still engaged, which is a bit odd. So let's just go nav. And the aircraft should start to turn right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I haven't changed the mode here. So it's a V-lock at the moment. So I press the, Z the CDI button, the course deviation indicator button, and it will switch to GPS. So now the plane will start to follow. There you go. We're banking right. So the plane is going to go and intercept the, the line through the sky, and it will turn left again in a moment. Here it goes. So it's just crabbing across to fly along the line of the flight plan. So it's important there that we had the, the mode of the, the CDI to be in GPS. So when you are operating in GPS mode, the NAV1 instrument down here essentially is showing you the course deviation indicator. So this line is the CDI. Yeah, so it works exactly the same as you would see in the G1000. The instrumentation you see displayed on the bottom of the, the primary flight display. So this is just a physical version of the same instrumentation. Okay, and you can see it's automatically crabbing for the wind, which is great. We can play with the comm radios if we want along the way, and then we obviously we get distance measuring and things like that, which is quite nice but we don't really need to because we've got GPS. So let's go and zoom out and then we can see where we are along our flight plan during the day. We'll turn off, can we turn off the GPS tracking on this? Oh, the sim has paused. There you go, there's our first pause of the day. No doubt it's a server issue. It always seems to be. Hopefully it will wake back up and won't crash the desktop. Yep, there it goes, it's just unpaused itself. So I've just turned off the GPS tracking so we can move this map around during the day and see where we are. Just make that a little bit smaller. Okay, so we are on our way across Italy. So I'm going to move this camera out, make it slightly fisheye, so wide angle, and 
family, we will enjoy our journey across Italy and I will be back when we get a bit closer to the mountains in the distance, I guess. As we fly along, we could go a bit higher, couldn't we? So let's go and sort that out while we still can. Whoops. Uh, F. So let's go and put a target altitude in of... 7,500 feet. Well, no, we'll go for 5,000. Should be good. So we've set a target altitude of 5,000 feet. So now we need to go across to the autopilot and tell it the rate to get there. So if we go for vertical speed... ...thousand feet a minute until we get to 5,000 feet. So the aircraft is now doing that. You can see we've gone to a thousand feet a minute on the vertical speed. The speed, the um, indicated airspeed will be dropping off because we are obviously climbing. But then it will return once we get to 5,000. So we're just coming up to 4,000 feet. The beep is telling us we are within a thousand feet of our target altitude. On our way, so let's increase the range on the GPS as well, so we can see where we are. There we go. So I don't need the map now because we've got the GPS. So we'll keep that in the corner of the screen. We'll sit up in the chair so we can see the scenery coming past. So we've got our reference here of where we are along the plot. We can see where we're going. And if we just aim down a little bit, we can see our indicated airspeed as well. And our altitude, which is perfect. If I zoom out a little bit so we get a fisheye lens, then we can show this even more. Excellent. So we're gradually making our way across Italy. So I'll be back in a bit. I'm just going to go grab some lunch. And hopefully we'll be back in time to go and explore Mount Vesuvius. Go and find Pompeii. Have a look at Naples. And then carry on with our journey. Okay, I'll see you in a bit.
Hello, I'm back. I'm just reading the chat to catch up. Afternoon from Alec Clapperton. Really pleased I've managed to catch the second leg of this. Yeah, it's going to be fun. And Mansoga. Uh, I watched your Valanta vid. Valanta doesn't work for me. I had to send a ticket. Um, yeah, I've, I've seen various people have issues with it. I've never had an issue with it personally. And I've never seen anybody I know have an issue with it. But, um, yeah, various people have. I'm not sure why. Obviously, without being sat in front of your computer and spending some time having a look at it, there's no easy way of diagnosing that. So we're about halfway between Bari and Naples. About another 50 miles to go. lunch on the desk in front of me so we're all good. So we're going to have a look at the map and see where we are in reality. So just passing over these hills get the distance measurement from little nav map measure distance from here and we are 59 miles away so a little way to go yet so we just enjoy the scenery as we cross towards Naples and then obviously we'll have an explore once we get there looking around Mount Vesuvius try and find Pompeii and go and have a circle of Naples itself
Yeah, they do have the shadows of the turbines. Unfortunately, you end up with two shadows. There's the original turbine shadow in the texture of the ground, and then there's the, the shadow being cast by the 3D object. But it's pretty good. You can see them across here. Okay, so you can see we're getting closer to some pretty dramatic landscape. So we're about two thirds of the way between Bari and Naples now. <coughs> and the, the mountains are starting to appear in front of us. So you can see the one we're seeing to our left is obviously this one. I'm not sure if it has a name. It's not marked on the map with a name. So we will look to fly down in between these, I guess, at some point to get to Vesuvius before we go and do our touch and go at Naples. If you look uh, down to the southeast of Vesuvius, you can see Pompeii. It's really interesting to go and read about what happened. Most of our records of what happened with Pompeii are based on the writings of uh, Pliny the Younger, who related the stories from his father who I think was in Sorrento or Capri or he was he was somewhere off it may have been Capri that he was on I can't remember you'd have to go and read about it but he witnessed the eruption of Vesuvius so if you look at it if you didn't know this story obviously Vesuvius was originally a volcano you know with a with a cap on it so this whole top of the mountain blew off and most of it, the wind was southeasterly that day. Normally, there's a southwest wind apparently, so it would have blown into the um, the bay and been fine. But there was a southeasterly wind that day, so quite apart from the the mud flows, which destroyed Herculaneum, for example, a lot of the ash then fell like rain on Pompeii and buried it. Obviously, then it was completely it fell out of history and was unknown for hundreds and hundreds of years until Pompeii started to be recovered in recent history. But yeah, the more dramatic one that we have the remains of is Herculaneum, where the pyroclastic or boiling mud flows flooded the town and buried it. So it was, was very much frozen in time of, of the moment it happened. Okay, so we can start to fly through these hills and have some fun with the aeroplane and seeing what's going on outside. So let's come off the autopilot now. Alex is, Alec is saying he has climbed to the top of Vesuvius in real life. There is now a tree growing in the middle of the crater. Pompeii is amazing too. Herculaneum is better, yeah. I've not been to Herculaneum, I've been to Pompeii. I thought it was amazing that they only discovered the figures by accident. They were discovering um, cavities in the ash as they were excavating and someone realised that the cavities were where bodies had been so they started filling the cavities with uh, plaster oh we've just paused yet again who knows what causes the pauses i wonder if um well obviously a sober will be working on it but it's very frustrating when the sim suddenly pauses especially if you're in a group flight with air traffic control and you're on approach and the sim pauses which I have had happen numerous times. There we go. 
notice the weather changed as it unpaused. So it's something to do with the switchover, I think, between the servers, you know, the, the data sources for the weather. We are approaching down through this valley and then we'll come around to Vesuvius. Should we go a little bit lower? Don't want to overspeed the airframe, so I'm going to cut the throttle back. The interesting thing, as with a lot of historical accounts, apparently the letters written by Pliny the Younger, describing the actions of, his, of Pliny the Elder, um, were written 25 years after the fact. So nobody really knows how accurate his descriptions are, because 25 years is a long time to remember something happening, and you know, to be accurate about it. So Alex had terrible pauses as well. I had to crash the desktop this morning for no reason whatsoever. And then the servers vanished for about half an hour. The multiplayer servers disappeared. So I imagine there's all sorts of things going on to get ready for World Update 8. Whether that impacts the stability of the system, I don't know. I imagine it's, it must be enormously complicated to update it while people are using it. But saying that, in a normal infrastructure system, you would bring up, you know, a new, new instances of the servers and of the data alongside, and then just switch the routing on the network to pick them up. So you know, different servers would suddenly be responding to uh, requests. Because make no mistake, this is not run by just a few servers. This will be many farms around all over the world that are producing and delivering the data. Okay, let's just see. Are we coming up to the leg? Yeah, so this is the cut through that I was talking about. I think we can turn right here. Rather than going all the way around to the left, I think we can turn right. Unfortunately, because of the low cloud, we might, might not get a very clear view of Vesuvius, which is a shame. The thing that shocked me when we visited and saw Vesuvius were all the towns on the slopes of Vesuvius where obviously they shouldn't have been built there, or at least the tour guide said the local planning forbade it, but that didn't stop all sorts of shanty towns being built on its slopes. And of course it's an active volcano. If it ever should um, erupt then the flows from the mount or from the volcano would destroy those sh and kill everybody in those shanty towns. I think the best volcano story I've read about is um, Yellowstone Park in America. It's they call it a super volcano, I think, but the entire park is a volcano. It's the entire park is a caldera of like a big flattened volcano, a pool of magma just underneath the, the crust. And they know from looking at the geology and the rock faces when it's erupted in the past, because they can see layers of deposit from it going off, and it's due to go. And it has been for several thousand years, but of course we're talking on geological timescales, which are very different than ours. And yeah, they... they they know it's due to go, and then a few years ago, the 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 level of the the base of Yellowstone Park raised by a considerable distance in a very short time scale. 
And obviously they didn't put it in the press because people would have panicked and gone mad. But yeah, so Yellowstone Park is more unstable than people give credit for. Of course, if we're talking geological time scales, so tomorrow, in terms of a mountain, could mean 500 years time. Could mean a thousand years time. So we have a challenge, do we, to go and fly over the caldera of um, Vesuvius to see if we can see if we can find the tree, see if it's modelled. <laughs> it would be interesting actually just to go and circle the caldera and see how much detail it's been rendered in. So we'll stay fairly high up in the cloud line up here. So we'll have half a chance of getting up to the altitude to see the caldera. We're at nearly 4,000 feet. We're going to... how far have we got to go? We're about eight miles away. I'm going to climb just above this cloud and see if the caldera is poking out of the top. I think it might be. It's so gone for maximum power now. And we're climbing at quite a rate. Coming up for 5,000 feet. So we might be able to see the top of Vesuvius poking out of the clouds. Five and a half thousand feet. Six thousand feet. This twin otter can climb like crazy, can't it? So how are we doing? So there's the where the top of the mountain was, obviously blue, straight up, and then came down in bits all over this sort of kind of southeastern coastline. So you imagine there used to be a mountain here before it blew up. There's Naples over there in the the bay. <coughs> so as far as I understand, I think Pl Pliny saw it from the coast over there, across the across the water, and saw all the ash raining down on the villages. So it would appear we are going to get a good view of, and it would appear it's modelled very well. Let's cut the engine back. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is the top of Mount Vesuvius. So 
So it's worth pointing out this is not the original top. This whole area around here, this slope would have continued up to so somewhere up here. So this whole area of the mountain, if we go and look from outside, the whole top of the mountain is missing. Yes, yeah, so this all blew off. And this has reformed in the hundreds of years since. So this whole area ejected straight up as it exploded. And the ash from it rained down over this whole area down here. Oh, you think? Okay, so apparently Pliny may have been over the north side, so he'd have been over there, looking down. Yeah, I wasn't sure. You have to go and read and find out. Yeah, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? And obviously down in there is where we're saying there might be a tree growing. Yeah, it's um, quite frightening, isn't it, to think the forces at work to blow the entire top of a, a mountain off. So literally hundreds of millions of tons. in a fraction of a second thrown into the air quite a sobering thought so we're going to cut back to idle and we're going to slowly circle down go closer and closer So yeah, the force of the explosion at, um, <coughs> at Vesuvius would have made the, an atomic bomb look like chicken feet, basically. It's an unimaginable level of power. The real destruction done with an atomic bomb, of course, is the radiation, not so much the initial blast. And yes, you do get the the, um, the shock wave that goes out for a few miles, but it's nothing as it's not as bad as <laughs> not as bad as a few hundred million tons of ash falling on the surrounding several hundred kilometres. It's the really it's the radiation that causes the havoc with an atomic bomb. It means the, the entire area becomes uninhabitable. Okay. So we can't quite see anything down there. I don't think there's a tree down there. There are several monitor station buildings. And there's obviously a path that visitors can walk up. Which you can see here. So let's head, we'll do one more circle, then we'll go looking for Pompeii. And then we'll go along the bay towards Naples. So ship out in the bay. Okay, let's refer to the map for this to help us out. So Pompeii, we want to go uh, looking at reference points towards the hills so it's somewhere along this line so if we go back in and pull the throttle back so we can lose some altitude and we'll go and find Pompeii so we should be broadly heading for it and we are I'm not sure how obvious the ruins of Pompeii will be from an aircraft in a simulator. We probably need to get much lower.
So we're going broadly the correct direction. Is that part of the Pompeii complex, or is that just building works? I think that might be it. Obviously that's none of the buildings. Which is a shame, but there are bits and pieces of the buildings left. You can see the general layout, it's pretty awesome. Look at the views, it's amazing isn't it? Wonderful part of the world. Okay, so we're going to go back out towards the bay. slowly climbing back up. We're at 1300 feet at the moment and we're heading towards Naples to go and have a look at the city and then we carry on. Just looking at the time, trying to estimate how long it's going to take to get to Rome. <coughs> if we want to get there before it gets too dark we might have to skip going to Pescara um, oh, we should be good, as long as we don't spend too long in Naples and go straight for Pescara. We should get to Rome just as the sun is going down and we can always manipulate time on the... Um, within the world if we need to. Okay, let's re reduce the range on the GPS. Vanished there for us, which is another bug that's appeared recently. <coughs> oh, I've got a cough and hiccups. Figure that one out. I've had a cold. I've got three daughters, so three possible ways of bringing viruses into the house. And so far, we've been testing regularly because my other half works in education, so testing to death to make sure that we don't, or if we do bring COVID in, we know very quickly if we've had it. We haven't so far. But my daughters, of course, bring colds and 
coughs into the house, which is great. There's a ship out there in the Naples harbour on its way in. Should we go and see what the ship is? I've got the shipping mod, so this will be an accurate ship. It'll be a real ship that exists, and we will be able to go past and see its name. So if we approach it from behind, it should be fairly steady in our view. Or if we fly down the right-hand side of the ship and come past its stern, we should get a good view of the, the name of the ship. This is, should is, is famous last words, isn't it, really? So let's see if we can find out what the ship is. It will be a real ship. Can we see it from out here? Wallenius Willemsen. Now, is that the ship name, or is that the shipping line name? That's going to be the name on the back of the stern isn't it so if we just loop around past that corner then that will make sense so let's go over to this cockpit Faust the name of the ship is from Stockholm how awesome is that look how detailed it is That's the uh, fire, uh, sorry, uh, recovery vessel, isn't it? So that's the ship Faust from Stockholm. Obviously, it's unladen at the moment, which is why we can see the lower part of the boat. Okay, we're on our way to Naples. Let's go back and get in the pilot's seat. Obviously, uh, is that a dry dock? Looks like it, doesn't it? Seem they build ships here. There's another ship being loaded. It's obviously part of the scenery, and it's pretty badly done. The expensive yacht there. The Rapagloid, apparently. Container ship. Yeah, so Naples very much these days is an industrial city. Huge, huge rail yard. Many, many lines. I presume either taking or receiving goods from the port. So. Okay, so we are going to head off across country again. To keep to our schedule to hopefully get to Rome before it gets dark. So we need to be going 353 degrees, but we'll go for 350 to counter the wind. We can actually go in nav mode we get this right. So we want nav mode is already on the autopilot. We've got the altitude set to 5,000 feet already. So if we engage autopilot, <coughs> let's see what it wants to do with us. What's it going to do in terms of the altitude target? Is it going to climb to it or do we have to program it? To tell it to climb at a thousand feet a minute to get to five thousand feet, and then we'll have to think about how we're going to navigate these hills. It's a much more impressive volcano over there in terms of the, the look of it. Obviously, Vesuvius blew its top, but this one 
completely blew itself to pieces. But that may be in prehistory that that happened. We'd have to go and look at the history books, I guess. So let's go and push the engines up to as fast as we can. And just keep an eye on the gauges, make sure we don't overstress the engines. So yeah, look at this, the RPM is right up against the, the limiters. And that's not looking great. Okay, so we're not going to be pushing the engines quite that hard, hey? I don't like that final couple of percent of being stressed. Well, they can't do it continually. So we're climbing out to 5,000. Let's go a little bit higher than that. Let's go to 7,500. So when you change the altitude in here, in the Twin Otter, it also changes it for the autopilot you can see over there. That's the ADF. I did that the other day. I was tuning in the ADF to try and get to an altitude. And I thought, why isn't this working? So there you go. So we'll just enjoy the scenery along the way. I'm going to keep an eye on it until we're within the range of these hills just to make sure we're going to clear them. We could check on Little Nav Map and zoom out and we'll put in some relevant reference information in here. So we're going to 7,500 feet. How does that work in terms of these peaks? So it's just going to clear us over this one but that's after our next waypoint. So we only actually need to be at 5,000 feet if we are on our track. So if we go to uh, 6,000, we should be good. So we don't need to go as high as 7,500. Whoops, just missed that. So 6,000 feet as a target altitude. So that's just going beep because we're within 1,000 feet of our target. So we can watch the scenery it whiz past once more for the next little while. So if we um, scoot forwards again and sit up, we can arrange the screen in such a way that we get to see the map on the GPS and the altitude and the airspeed and where we're going. And we can leave the screen there so people can enjoy the scenery as we zoom along. I'm still not very confident about this altitude target. But we'll see how we go. So we can pull this down actually. It doesn't need to be that marked on there. So we'll go and clear our track off the map so far. There we go. And we can zoom this in actually along its length to see the plot. So as we move along, you can see the circle moving on the map on Little Nav Map. As we move along, we can see where those peaks are. So the first few peaks are going to be quite significantly below us. It's when we get about two thirds of the way towards Pescara, we really need to be worrying about that. Or, to, you know, just to keep an eye on it. I think we should be good. Okay. I'm going to turn this so it's just in view. Good. Autopilot's engaged. We're in nav mode, altitude hold mode now. Cruising towards Pescara at about 160 knots. Which is good. Engine's looking okay. 
see if we can squeeze a little bit more out of the engine without overstressing it. Just edging forwards the throttles and keeping an eye on the, the needles. That's as close as I can. I suppose we could go a little bit more. There we go, that's as much as I re realistically want to push it. So 155 to 160 knots. Let's have a look at the wind on the little left map. Let's see what it tells us. 15 knot headwind. So yeah, now you can see the hills, now we're getting through the broken cloud. You can see we're not gonna be anywhere near any of these hills, so that's that's fine. Right, I'm gonna go make a coffee. I'll be back in a few minutes. Oh, and I see Lee has appeared in the chat room. And ciao, Captain. <laughs> ciao, Lee. So we're on our on our way from Naples to Pescara for Lee's benefit. So you can see that on the map, actually. And then after Pescara, we're going to turn back, go back across country towards Rome, and that's where we will finish today. Hopefully, it will still be daylight when we arrive in Rome. If not, we'll just tweak the the time in the sim because it would be really lovely to do a couple of laps of Rome to go have a look at the, at the historic sites. Okay, back in a few minutes.
Okay, I'm back. So let's have a look and see where we're getting to. Let's go and refer to the map. We're coming over one of the highest points at the moment. Let's go and have a look outside, see how this is looking. Yeah, if we'd been further to the east, or should I say to the south of our track, southeast of our track, we would have had a few more problems, but we have to go at higher altitude, but we've actually gone for a fairly low point through the hills. So, wow, look, you can see the sun glinting off the, the Twin Otter. The engine's racing away, so I've pushed them up to the red lines. So something we ought to check is fuel. I haven't checked. Um, we're looking like we've got lots. So we've got more than half a tank left still. So we took off with quite a lot of fuel. So we sh that should see us through to Rome, hopefully. So here comes another high point that we're crossing. That's one way further out there, but I'm not sure that's going to impact us. It's obviously this hill here. So, yeah, we need to keep an eye on that. We should pass down the side of it if we follow the nav line. So it shouldn't be a problem. So yeah, we're just passing this ridge, which was the highest point at this part of the route. Then there's another point. If we zoom out, the little nav map will show us where that is. It is this... It doesn't look very dramatic on the map because it's a shallow gradient into it. But this is actually higher... looks like we're going to be good. So we'll pass down the right hand side of that mountain in the distance. Let's have a look around. and drink my coffee and watch the landscape whizzing past. We tilt this up slightly. Go to a slightly fisheye lens, we can see more landscape, I guess. Somebody remind me to do some GA flights on the group flights around Italy, because this is amazing landscape. It'd be great fun for doing GA.
uh, just looking <coughs> at the chat, um, Melanie Barber has asked, do I have multiplayer on? Yes, I do. I am on the West Europe server. Let's just check that. If we go and look at the top corner, the West Europe server, and I do have multiplayer switched on. I always play with multiplayer on. Um, I can't see why not to. I don't have labels on usually though, because it makes it look like a cartoon instead of a simulator. Um, so yes, if there is anybody around, um, I should have the lamp lights on. Let's go and see if they're operating. It's difficult to say and see in the sunshine, isn't it? Let's just go and look inside, make sure the lights are on. So you should see my lights twinkling away in the sky. Um, actually, have I switched them on? That's a really good question. Antique, no I haven't, position. And there we go. So we should. See them twinkling away now. Yeah, they're on there. Okay, so we're still making good progress across the landscape. Finally from Jamil M. I was looking for a Microsoft Flight Simulator live to watch on YouTube. Yes, I'm going to be online for quite some time yet. We are flying across Italy to Pescara and then we're going to turn after visiting the coast there and go back towards Rome. Hopefully we will get to Rome before nightfall. Just looking at the time, it's three o'clock now. It's probably going to be dark by four. Mm, it's going to be touch and go with 80 miles to go across from Pescara to Rome. It's going to be dodgy to whether we'll get there in time. Let's go and evaluate. What are we going to find? At Pescara, all we're really going to find is a runway and some. There is the town though. I'm just wondering whether we cut this short and turn left through the mountains and go straight for Rome to get there before it gets dark. No, we'll carry on for Pescara. We're almost there now anyway. Let's go and see how far we have left. So right click on my aircraft, measure distance, and we are 33 miles out from Pescara. And we're doing 160 knots. And these, these are the hills that we knew we were going to just pass down the side of. So it looks like we're just going to skim this hill. Does it have a name? Reserve Nature... It's a nature reserve. Farra San Martino. So it's the San Martino Forest, I'm guessing, that translates as... But the actual mountain, uh, Mont Amaro. By the look of it, that's Mont Amaro. Or Mount Amaro. So we'll try and move these windows out of the way. That was pretty close, wasn't it? <laughs> Somebody's house down there, in among the trees. Whoa, can you imagine living somewhere that remote? It'd be pretty amazing, wouldn't it? It's a huge, huge mountain. We are at 6,000 feet, cruising at 160 knots. I'm going to start rating these trips on the live streams by the number of cups of coffee I've drink along the way. Some of them are going to be horrendous life-shortening live streams. There's a twin otter.
we have to go find out the name of this village at the foot of the mountain, don't we? Lama de Pali Paligni, Paligni, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Lama de Paligni. And there's another village coming up a little bit further along, directly under our flight path. She's just down here. How can you imagine living in the shadow of the mountain? Amazing, wouldn't it? So if we go and scoot forwards in the in the aircraft, a little bit too far forwards there. There we go. Okay, so we need to start thinking in terms of descending for uh, Pescara. So let's jump back inside the cockpit, drop the altitude down to 2,000 feet. You're hearing the beep because we put the target altitude more than 1,000 feet away from our actual altitude. So we'll go down to 2,000 and we need to choose the rate at which we do that. So we press the alt altitude button which gives us the vertical speed and we come down at say 500 feet a minute and then we go for vertical speed mode but we should what's going wrong with this do we need to change this again Then altitude again to set the vertical speed. Ah! If I had a brain, that'd be dangerous. minus 500, there it goes, it's doing it now. So over the next few minutes we're going to descend towards Pescara, let's go and have a look on the map, find out where we are in relation to Pescara. Based on the wind we can fly straight in runway 04, we could also, uh, how far out are we now, we're about 20 miles out. Should we use air traffic control for a change? So scroll lock, key brings up air traffic control, tune Pescara approach. Uh, Pescara, tune the tower, not Pescara. Request touch and go. So they want us to come straight in. That's fine. Acknowledge the pattern entry instructions. So when we get a bit closer, we'll deviate. So we'll turn over the top of Villanova. Hopefully we'll be down to 2,000 feet by then. So let's go and um, go for a bit steeper descent. Make sure we come down. In time, we're keeping an eye on the indicated airspeed. We are still racing along, but I'm hoping to get back to Rome in time before it gets dark. 
so it's 20 past three now I'm not sure what sunset time will be in Rome I'll go and check that in a moment on the internet I'm not going to hold out much hope that we're going to get back before dark because that sun's going to go down fast we are absolutely racing towards Pescara so let's go back in the aeroplane Let's align our heading. So if we zoom in down here, we need to move the heading marker. To about 3.40 and we go to heading hold mode instead of nav mode. You can see the airfield down here now. at a rate of knots. Okay, we'll come off the autopilot now and fly the rest manually. We are right up against the limits on the engine. going to do the same on the way back to Rome. speed Going for 10 degrees flaps. Go for 20 degree flaps to shut up the warning system. Up. 
Okay, and we're back on our way to Rome. Jamil is asking, am I a real world pilot? No, I am not. I just played a lot of simulators, that's all. <laughs> Misspent youth, let's put it that way. Okay, we're almost going to be flying straight into the sun on the way back, which is going to be interesting. So flaps are up, we're going to push the engines up against the stops again, but not over stressing them too much hopefully. So we're going to cancel our landing intention. I'm surprised they're not just letting us go, because we've done the touch and go. Cancel landing intention. So we should get a goodbye message from them soon as well. Okay, so let's have a look. We should be able to go for nav mode and altitude hold and engage the autopilot again. So coming back along the line, which the autopilot is going to join us on to now, we need to be at at least, I don't know, 8,000 feet to climb over these mountains. So let's begin that climb now. So looking down at the autopilot down here. 8,000 feet. 8,000 feet at a vertical speed of 1,000 feet a minute. And we'll get there in no time at all. And there we go. It's climbing. As the vertical speed is showing 1,000 feet per minute. Obviously the indicated airspeed is going to take a bit of a hit to do that, but it's all good. What if there was crash physics, like uh, beaming drive? What's beaming drive? I've never heard of that. But yeah, it would be quite cool if there were crash physics and you know the plane could explode and bits could fall off. It would be it would be great fun. But I'm guessing the um, the makers of the aircraft that are licensed in the game wouldn't be too happy about that. It's a bit like Gran Turismo, where they've got lots of real world cars but you can't damage them. And I guess that's part of their licensing agreement. They wouldn't want to see their car, or they wouldn't want you know people to see their cars being damaged. It's, it's damaging to their brand, I guess. So we're climbing out towards 8,000 feet. I wonder if we're going to get there before we get to the hills. 8,000 is right on the limit of needing oxygen as well, actually. So it's going to be an interesting one. So let's have a look from outside, shall we, for a while? Just to see some of this amazing scenery that we're passing by. I'm going to switch the ATC off. We're en route to Rome. So Beam NG Drive is a crash simulator game for cars with realistic physics, and Melanie Barber tells us. We'll have to go and have a look at that at some point, that sounds like fun. So we're 
just climbing out. Let's have a look at the altitude plot on this map. Yeah, we're going to make it easily look. We're going to get to 8,000 feet. Quite a long way before we need to. So in order to get some ground speed as we're doing so, let's go and lessen our vertical speed. Because we don't need to be climbing as quickly. So we'll cut our vertical speed in half. And therefore you will see the indicated airspeed rising now. So we need to be at 8,000 only when we get to... Let's find out the name of this mountain. So if we hover here, it's right here. Uh, it appears the mountain doesn't have a name. It's just high ground. Various chalets. Antifietro, Montefredo. Reserve Natural, so the Nature Reserve. Monte Valino. So Mount Valino. Interesting, okay. So we're not there yet, we're just on our way. So if we go and have a look in the aircraft, we can have a look out the window down below us, the fields going past. It's amazing scenery, isn't it? Sit and watch it for ages. I never don't know why I've not thought about flying around Italy before, because these hills would make perfect backdrops for group GA flights. For anybody that's watching, if you want to join a flight later this evening at 8 pm UTC or um, GMT we do a flight on the virtualflight.online server i'll post it into the chat so we will be doing a flight tonight at long island visiting lots of air doing lots of touch and goes around long island in the us so i'll post a link to the chat straight to the discord server for virtual flight online which is where we do the voice chat along the way so everybody gets to have a conversation while we're flying along and have a laugh and it's completely informal there's no like you know no requirement to fly completely sensibly we just ask everybody to be respectful in the voice chat and you know no racism sexism anything like that so you know just to everybody to have a nice time chill out on a sunday evening and go for a fly together so i'm going to post a link for the discord server in the voice in the um the youtube live chat Okay, yeah, so Virtual Flight Online, I started it quite some time ago now, about 18 months ago maybe, um, as a website with flight plans for people to go and do group flights together. And it rapidly gained momentum and we ended up with, well, I think we now got about 700 members on the Discord server, of which you probably get 20 or 30 for each group flight. It's obviously people fall in and out of love with Flight Simulator, but we've um, got a regular group that turn up to do the group flights and they're entertaining bunch and what they don't know about the flight simulators aren't worth knowing about the flight simulators so for anybody new coming in that can't figure out how something works or what to do in a certain situation the group is fantastic at answering people's questions and you will see in the discord server we have lots of channels for different things like sharing flight plans or getting support or you know all sorts of things it's very very good so yeah, head to virtualflight.online on the web. That will also take you to a link for the Discord server. There's a Facebook group as well, uh, virtualflight.online, if you search on Facebook or just follow the, the link, Facebook for it, that's in the website. Um, there's a kind of a small amount of doubling up between Facebook and Discord, and I know a lot of people don't like using Facebook, so that's why it's only kind of an optional thing, really. But the Discord server is where everybody tends to gather for the group flights. Okay, 
these mountains are high, aren't they? And I'm just looking at the one in front of us, wondering if we're going to get to the altitude in time. Well, apparently we already are. So we're going to keep an eye on this. I have a funny feeling we're going to pass right through the, that low point in the mountain. Which would be quite amusing if we do. That we've picked, by pure chance, our navigation line is right through the lowest point in the ridge. So we'll keep an eye on it and be prepared to remove autopilot quite quickly. is the sun in the sky bearing in mind we've got about half an hour of flying time to get back to Rome or no maybe 20 minutes we're not that far away I think we're going to do it we're going to get there just before it gets dark so we've got 50 miles to go and we're doing 150 knots yeah so 20 minutes I was right, wasn't I? We are going to... It's almost like threading a needle. We're going to go through that low point. <laughs> if I'm going to be that lucky this week, maybe I should go and buy a lottery ticket or something. Obviously, if we looked at the map properly, we could have you know, deviated from the, the route and gone around some of these hills. It wouldn't have been an issue. If you're enjoying watching any of these live streams I'm doing, do hit the like and the subscribe button. Um, my middle daughter tells me that I should be telling people to click on the little bell icon at the top right corner of YouTube which will inform you then when I'm next live streaming. So it will inform you when I go live. Apparently. Oh, we've got a pause in the simulator. Another one. That's the third one of the flight so far. Almost getting used to them now. So we'll let the simulator sit there for a moment and there it goes again. It's just started. So yes, as well as liking and subscribing, apparently if you click the bell at the top right corner of YouTube in the web application, it will notify you when I am online streaming. What is the ceiling level for the Twin Otter? Let's go have a look. Twenty-five thousand feet. It's, remember, it's a twin, and it's got turboprop engines, so it can significantly outdo something like a Cessna. Cessna, you're looking at about fourteen thousand feet for a C one seven two, for example. Obviously, this thing can go up to quite a lot higher. And you have to bear in mind, once you get beyond about 8,000 feet, you're starting to have to think about oxygen. So I'm not sure if this version of this aircraft is accurate enough to, um, to simulate oxygen. Yeah, so we really did just skim through the gap, didn't we? Let's go and have a look from the next side. Whoa, look at this scenery. Let's go look from inside. So if we go and jump across the cockpit. That is a view, isn't it? That's pretty spectacular. Uh, 
Um, the Twin Otter is kind of famous for delivering people to base camp at Mount Everest. So yeah, you'd certainly get to base camp. You might not get to the summit easily. But you could get to the lower reaches and there's a version of the Twin Otter that has skids. So you could go up there. Um, but yeah, the Twin Otters regularly ferry people into Mount Everest, into base camp. That is one hell of a hill. <laughs> and obviously we've got more hills ahead, which we will reach very soon. Let's go and sit out over the top of the cockpit. Flying directly towards the sun and roam in the distance. Let's go and check our progress on the map. So if we measure distance we are now 39 miles from Campino Airport. Chiam sorry, Chiampino Airport. Lima India Romeo Alpha. We're going to go and visit Rome before we land. And we're going to see it at sunset by the look of it, which would be fantastic. I'm just looking to see if there's a, a, a lower level route into Rome. If we came in through here um, via Okay, so let's go to heading mode. I'm going to need to go and put the heading in though. So if we go directly west for a few minutes. Just putting the heading setting in. So we're going to heading mode, so it's going to follow the heading bug now. So we're going to come across here and, and follow the low ground on the way into Rome which means we can start descending earlier. So you can see the, this valley that we can follow through. Um, altitude, so we'll come down to 5,000 to begin with. So 5,000 feet altitude with a vertical speed of 1,000 feet a minute. Keep an eye on the indicated airspeed because it's going to increase. This is this ridge is the reason I don't want to go any lower than 5,000 immediately. So obviously our altitude plot now in Little Nav Map means nothing to us because we're not on navigation line anymore. So we can get rid of that. We're just going to go visually and fly the valley into Rome. Alec is saying uh, Flumicino, is that how you pronounce it? Flumicino is a nice one to land at right on the coast. So let's go and have a look. Okay, so yeah, that's a bit further out, right on the coast. We're going to aim to come down this valley into Rome. So let's get rid of our flight plan now, that's pretty useless to us, and the information screen. So we'll look to fly down the valley. And we can do that by eye now. So we can take the autopilot off. We know broadly where we're going. I'm going to pull the engine back ever so gently to take it away from the limits. And time to fly the aeroplane. beep is happening because we're more than a thousand feet now or within a thousand feet of our target altitude. Well we're cruising along, let's go and have a look at the other side. A trusty propeller. 
jump back into the pilot seat. Very rapid progress towards Rome. Is that an airfield? I think it might be an unmarked runway. <laughs> it's quite amusing. Okay, so we pass over Rio Fredo into the next valley and then it's quite a quick run into Rome. Well, that's the plan anyway. We'll just admire the scenery along the way. another pause. I think this is the most pauses I've had in one flight. So I imagine this is to do with World Update 8 being set up on the servers. <coughs> and it's just unpaused itself. We're really going to get terrain warnings all the way in. View. It's a bit noisier out here. Just check the volume levels. So I am beating the engine volume level, which is good. Okay, so we're going to get sundown as we circle over Rome, which will be really cool. So, 20 miles to the centre of Rome. Descending. Let's go down through this gap in the hills over here. Just 
keeping half an eye on the indicated airspeed, which is creeping up towards the max for the airframe. Let's go and have a look at this village. Great. So what kind of bearing do we need to keep to go straight for the centre of Rome? Let's have a look. Measure distance from here to the Colosseum is 240 degrees. So that's just something for us to use as a reference. So we fly 240 degrees. And we continue descending. Come down to about 1500 feet, so we want to calibrate the altimeter, which I've just done by pressing B as a nice shortcut in Flight Sim. Otherwise, we have to go and look on the Metar information from the airports nearby to find out what the calibration is for the um, barometric pressure. First leveling out to 1500. off the course a little bit there so we'll go and cross back to 230 ish <coughs> for a couple of moments just to get ourselves back on track for the Colosseum. Seems remarkably flat doesn't it after the mountains? <laughs> start to see some bits of features here and there. Obviously it will render in as we get closer. Starting to see the sun reflecting off the see in the distance. It's just behind that cloud at the moment. Yeah, so we should have plenty of time to look at Rome before the sun completely vanishes. Go and have a look at the map, see where we are. So we're just crossing back across our path. So back to 240 on the compass. Back up to 2,000 feet. So we'll descend gently. And we will slow down. I'm 
feeding elevator trim <coughs> as we slow down. Oh, I've got a frog in my throat. And we should start seeing some pretty serious scenery soon. Is this the Roman ruins? Part of the city. Well, we're heading directly for the Colosseum and the Pantheon and the Vatican City. So we'll see how we go. Down to 1300 feet. I don't want to get much below 1000 feet. So we're heading towards the Vatican at the moment. We should start to see some of the famous sites very soon. I want to do this from indoors, or from inside the aircraft, so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so this is the is it the wedding cake building they call it? I can never remember the names of these buildings. That's the gate, isn't it? With the horses on the corners and the big road junction. <laughs> of the ruins. Here's the Colosseum. <coughs> and yeah, here we go. There's a lot of the old buildings that you can see here that have been restored. So, yeah, you can see a lot of it now.
There's the dome of the... There's, there's so many domes in Rome, and they're all historic in one way or another. That shows the kind of the evolution of the techniques used to build them. Okay, one more lap around the Colosseum and then we will head off to land. Before we do so, we're just going to go and fly along the gardens in the distance there. So we're going to level up. And that's where the, is that the railway that comes in over there. There's another famous building here, and there's a famous street that leads to it. Another one here. The domed roof. Okay, it's time for us to go. We need to go and land before it gets dark. So we're heading back to towards Campino or Lima, India, Romeo Alpha. So let's go and see what they say on air traffic control. Nearest airport list. Chin Tower. Request full stop landing. Straight in, runway 15. So we're coming straight in, runway 15. Clear to land runway 15 de Havilland, Foxtrot, November Tango. That was easy, I thought we'd have to fly the pattern. Flaps down. The speed is coming off. Right, just get lined up and come in, and then the flight's over. It's been a fantastic flight. Um, thank you for everybody that's been watching along the way, keeping me company. If you fancy doing the group flight later this evening at 8 p.m. GMT or UTC, uh, 20 hundred hours. We are doing a group flight on the virtual flight online discord server uh, The details are in the group Flights section of the discord server. They are also on the flight simulator forum on their events calendar So if you go and have a look you will see the event listed So we can turn off the ATC now and enjoy our approach into Rome. Uh, 
as I said earlier, if you've enjoyed this, go and click on the like button, the subscribe button, and click on the little bell icon, apparently. Um, I don't know much about how YouTube works. I just like doing flying. And it makes it a little bit less lonely of an activity if people can watch as you go along. Okay, so I have to say the Twin Otter is quite nice to land. You see all the little buildings coming along <laughs> and the streets below us. You can actually come in quite steeply with the Twin Otter. It's very good. Not going to need anywhere near all of this runway. Oh, we have a... A fellow aeroplane is coming alongside us. Just getting ready to avoid them. There we go. Ground. Request taxi to parking. So we can park anywhere basically. It's all general aviation parking as far as I can see. I think somebody ran, was having fun with the yellow paint the day they painted these taxiways. Okay, engine. Or oh, sorry, parking brake on. Uh, okay, first things first. Let's go and cut the mixture. That will cut the engines. And then we can pull the propeller pitch back. And we can turn off the generators. And we can turn off the fuel pumps. And then overhead we can go and turn off the power. And we're good. And the aeroplane is slowly returning to cold and dark on the ground. And there we go. So thank you very much for those that followed along. I'll be back online again soon. If you want to be automatically notified when I'm online, just click the little bell icon up in the top corner of YouTube and it will do that for you. OK, so I will be on the group flight later this evening in about four hours time. So I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.